Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through panel method geometry. While this may seem like a trivial uh, topic, it's actually an important first step in understanding and eventually writing a panel method code. So how do we define a polygon in 2D space? Uh, if I have a piece of paper and I just draw a bunch of points on the paper, then we can associate each point with its x-coordinate and its y-coordinate. So we define coordinate pairs. So I have a few shapes down here. We have a line, a triangle, and a rectangle. A line can be fully described by two points, a triangle by three, and a rectangle by four. But if we start getting into more complicated shapes like airfoils, then more points will generally make better shape approximations. So for the rest of this video, the shape we will be dealing with is a circle. And it's hard to draw an infinite number of points on this board, so we're, we're going to approximate this circle with eight points. Later on, when I go through the code, we'll expand this to an airfoil, but this just keeps the geometry simple for now. So I've drawn eight points on here, and if you connect these with straight lines, you probably can see that you get an octagon. But imagine that there is actually a circle, and we've just defined eight points around that circle. So the question is, what order should these points be in? So over here, I've drawn the same eight points defining our circle or approximation of the circle and we could say this is point one, point two, point three, point four, etc. and with each point we have an associated x and y coordinate and so this arbitrary point numbering is fine to define the shape so if I just keep on going and then I plot every one of these points uh, in my program I'll get the shape that I'm talking about here, this approximation of a circle, and that's fine. But the problem is, what if we want to find the side length? So you can think of this in between each point. We want to find the side length. Will this suffice? So the answer is no, that's not good enough, because we will need to use the coordinate points of the points that are bounding the panel or the side to compute that panel length. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing a line between these two adjacent points over here. That's the solid green line. We have point 1 with coordinates x1, y1. Now we have point 2, coordinates it's x2, y2, and we're going to use Pythagorean theorem to compute the side length, and that's what's shown up here, equal to the square root of uh, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So now that we know that we need points in order to define the panels, we can draw our circle again, define eight points to approximate the circle, that's these black things, and then connect those points with straight lines. Those are our panels approximating the circle. And then down here, I'm highlighting this panel in blue, and we'll call this panel A, and this goes from point I to point I plus one. So these points are called boundary points. And so I'm blowing up this panel over here, and we can see the boundary points here, and this open circle here is called a control point. So the boundary point here uh, has coordinates x, b, i, and y, b, i, and the boundary point here for this point has coordinates x, b, i plus 1, y, b, i plus 1. And for the panel A, the control point is defined as x, c, a, y, c, a. Now we have two more variables to define. So the first one here is s bar a, and that is the panel length between point i and i plus 1, and then we have lowercase s a, and that's the distant progress from point i to point i plus 1. So knowing the boundary point locations for this panel, we can compute the panel length and the position of the control point. So the panel length is based on the Pythagorean theorem that we computed on the previous whiteboard, but now plugged in with the, uh, with the two boundary points, i and i plus 1. And then the control point locations, so xca and yca, uh, can also be found by using these two equations, using the two boundary points for point i and i plus 1. So you might have noticed on the previous whiteboard that we could have switched the i and the i plus 1 locations uh, for the boundary point and still gotten the exact same values of the panel length and the control point uh, coordinates. And that's true, so you can compare this, which is the same figure from the previous whiteboard where we have i, i plus 1, and if you continue around you can see that it progresses clockwise around this polygon, versus the reversed case where we have i, i plus 1, and this now uh, incrementally progresses counterclockwise around the polygon. And both would be correct if all we were solving for were these variables. So why is the direction of the indices around the polygon important? So why is clockwise versus counterclockwise important? Well, we need to define a couple more variables for our shape, uh, such as the normal and tangential vectors for each panel. And if we're trying to make the normal vectors point out of the polygon, the direction that these progress around the polygon is important. So we'll always be looping clockwise around for the rest of these computations. Uh, and so I've drawn again the circle with the eight point representation of the circle, the panels connecting these points. And now instead of looking at the bottom right, I'm going to be using the top left one because it's a little bit easier to visualize when I'm talking about angles. And so the top left one here, we have the first point bounding it is I, the next point 
clockwise around is I plus one. We'll call this panel A, and you can see that the X direction is that way, Y direction is that way. And so I've blown up that panel over here, and again we have the I boundary point, so X B I, Y B I, and the I plus one boundary point, X B I plus one, Y B I plus one. The control point, again located halfway between these two boundary points is XCA, YCA for panel A. So what we're gonna do here is define a few new variables. The first one is the normal vector for this panel. And like I said on the previous whiteboard, it's always gonna be pointing out of the polygon. So in this case, it'll be pointing out of the polygon, which is why I'm showing it here. And it's, at, it's perpendicular to the panel because it's the normal vector. This dash line is uh, aligned with the x-axis, and then we can define a couple of angles that go from the x-axis to something else. So the first one is phi A, and this is the angle from the positive x-axis to the inside surface of the panel. So that's the inside surface of the panel, because this is inside the polygon, this is outside the polygon. The next one is delta A, and that's the angle from the positive x-axis, again, starting from here, to the outward normal vector of the panel. So that's going from here to the outward normal vector of the panel. And that's, again, n hat A. And then the last one, which is not on the board right now, but it'll come into play later, and so this is just to get the nomenclature in here, is beta A, and that's the angle between the free stream vector, V infinity, and the outward normal of the panel. So let's just calculate some of these values based off of the known boundary points. So uh, dx, I've just redrawn the panel over here with the x distance is dx and the y distance is dy. So dx is equal to uh, xbi plus one minus xbi. dy is just ybi plus one minus ybi. And that means we can solve for the total panel length as just the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. The control points here, or the control point, uh, xca is the same as before, xbi plus xbi plus one over two, and yca, y ybi plus ybi plus one divided by two. And then the new one now are phi, or the new ones are phi a and delta a. So phi a, if we look at this here, you see this angle between the horizontal and here is the same as the angle between this horizontal here and the panel. So we can write this as the inverse tangent. So inverse tangent gives us the opposite over the adjacent. So we have the inverse tangent of dy over dx. And now because delta a it always goes from the same axis as phi a, but goes to the normal. We always know that the normal is pointing 90 degrees away from uh, the panel itself. So delta a will always be phi a plus 90 degrees. Okay, so now we need to look at the inverse tangent function because while it may seem trivial, it's actually not when you're doing panel methods and this can trip you up. So when you're looking at coding up the inverse tangent, there's two options available for you in MATLAB and Python, for example. The first one is a tan dy divided by dx, and the second one is a tan two, which takes two arguments, dy comma dx. So let's see what the outputs are for both of these functions. So I've drawn two plots up here, and on each plot I have four points, so those, those are the black points, at one, 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 negative one, negative one, negative one, and negative one, one. Those are the same for both of those, and these points you'll note bisect the x and y axes, so they're all at 45 degrees from, from the x and y axes. So we're gonna input these points into this function here first. So uh, starting with the one, one, when we put this in, we end up getting an angle output of 45 degrees. So from the positive x-axis, we're going plus 45 degrees. If we put in this point, however, the answer is negative 45 degrees. So we're starting from the x-axis and going minus 45 degrees. Now, if we put in this point here, we get negative 45 degrees. And that's because we're starting from, uh, starting from back here and moving around in the negative direction, right? The same as this direction, but starting back uh, here, moving negative 45 degrees. Same thing for this point here. We're starting from back here, but we're moving in the positive direction. So we have positive 45 degrees. And the problem with this is that if you give this input and this input, you're going to get the exact same answer and you're not gonna know uh, where you are in space. The same thing here, if you put this one in versus this one in, you'll get the same answer. So these are non-singular. Now conversely, if we decide to use the a tan two function, then what we end up getting for this point is plus 45 degrees, same as this one, so that's all good. And the one minus one, we get negative 45 degrees, and that's the same here. However, for these two points, what we end up getting is an angle referenced off of the positive x-axis. In this case, we're going all the way over to this uh, point right here and that's 135 degrees from the positive x-axis. And for this point here, we're going down this way over to this line, and that gives us negative 135 degrees. You can see that none of these four angles are the same. And so the nice thing about these angles here is that we can get 
uh, these angles to range from 0 to 360 so that they'll all be positive by simply adding 360 degrees to any of the negative angles that we get. So we get 45 degrees, 135, then we add 360 to negative 135 so we get 225, and then we add 360 to negative 45 and we get 315 degrees. So the point of this whiteboard is just to show you that we're going to be using a tan 2 because we don't want any ambiguity uh, of quadrants when we're dealing with uh, finding the panel angles. And the last issue we have to address is how do we calculate beta A. And so this is how we include the angle of attack into our calculations. So the angle of attack is alpha or AOA. So recall from a while ago that beta A is the angle between the free stream vector V infinity and the panel outward normal n hat a. So the equation for beta a that we can use then is phi a plus 90 minus alpha and recall that phi a plus 90 uh, is just equal to delta a. So we're going to look at two examples. First one down here and this is the first example is for an angle of attack of zero so that means that the uh, free stream velocity vector is aligned with the positive x-axis. I'm going back down to the bottom right panel in this polygon and so you can see that we have point or boundary point i boundary point i plus 1, so polygons go on like this, and that's why we have the outward normal plotted this way, so it's out of the polygon. And then positive x-axis here in the dash black, and so we have phi a was the angle from the positive x-axis to the inside of the panel, again the inside of the polygons over here, and then delta a was the angle from the positive x-axis to the uh, outward normal vector. And we know that delta a is always equal to phi a plus 90, which is why we can write beta a as delta a minus alpha. So in this example the panel angle is at 45 degrees from the x-axis so it's up 45 degrees like this. That means that we can write uh, phi a as if we go all the way around to here that's 180 plus 45 that gives us phi a of 225 degrees which means that our delta a is 225 plus 90 315 degrees. And so in this particular case, or the special case, where there's no angle of attack, zero degrees, beta A is actually equal to delta A. So we have beta A is equal to 315 minus zero is equal to 315 degrees. And you'll note that you can actually write that angle the same as, instead of going all the way around like we do with the blue, you can also write it as going down from the uh, positive x-axis down to that vector or 360 minus 315 is equal to 45 degrees because the cosine of both of these angles gives the same value. Now the second example is for the same exact panel at the same exact orientation so still at 45 degrees from the positive x-axis but now we have an angle of attack of plus 15 degrees so you can see that we have this uh, free stream velocity vector angled up at 15 degrees from the positive x-axis. Again we have point i here, point i plus 1 for the boundary points, the control point here, the outward normal n hat a pointing this way because we're going around clockwise so the inside of the polygons here, outsides over here and again from the positive x-axis we can draw one to the inside of the panel, that's phi a. From the positive x-axis we draw all the way around to the normal vector, that's delta a, which is just phi a plus 90 degrees. And now we're drawing beta a from the free stream vector, so that's from the free stream vector now, to the outward normal, so all the way around to the outward normal. And you can see now that uh, beta A is not the same as delta A because you can see there's this difference uh, from the angle of attack. So delta A again is just equal to 225 degrees plus 90 degrees is equal to 315 degrees. And so beta A from this equation is given by delta A minus alpha delta A, so 315, minus 15 degrees gives us 300 degrees. Alternatively, you can also compute the distance between right, V infinity here down to the outward normal, and that's just given by 45 degrees plus 15 degrees because the angle between the x-axis down to here, this is 45 degrees plus that extra angle of attack, 15 degrees, and that gives us 60 degrees. And these are the same in the computations because cosine of 300 and cosine of 60 both give you the same value. Point 0.5. And finally, before getting to the code, let's just go through the summary of all the equations that we got from the previous whiteboards. We got the uh, control point locations based off of the boundary points. We got the difference in those boundary point locations in the x direction and in the y direction. We can use those dx and dy values to compute the entire panel length, s bar a. We got the uh, angle between the positive x-axis and the inner side of the panel by using the inverse tangent of the dy over dx, which we can code up as an a tan 2. If 
that value is less than zero, we can just add 360. Note that this doesn't actually do anything for the computations uh, because you're just offsetting it by two pi, uh, but it does help when you're trying to plot stuff and visualize it a little bit later. Then delta A is the angle between the positive x-axis and the outward normal vector, so we just take phi A plus 90. And then beta A is the angle between the free stream vector and the outward normal, so we just take that delta A and subtract off the angle of attack. Okay, now we're ready to see how to put those equations to use in a code. Uh, you're looking at my Python code right now, but I also have this available in MATLAB. I'll make both of those scripts available on my website and GitHub, so check the uh, video description for links to those. I'll just orient you really quick. Up here, we're just importing some stuff that we need. In this section here, we're creating or loading the geometry. Down here is where the actual calculations take place, the stuff from the whiteboard. You can see there's not that much and then down here we're going to plot the figure and so uh, in the plotting we're going to plot the uh, figure itself as a filled black polygon and then we're also going to plot uh, the panel normal vector so that's what's going on down here and I'm going to plot those scaled based off of the panel length s so longer panels will have a longer panel normal vector and I'll also uh, color the first panel blue and the second panel green to show you which orientation they're, they're going around. Another note is that this code is commented on every single line, so if you have any questions about what's going on, just look at the comments for that line. Uh, second thing I want to mention is that we're going to be looking at both an airfoil and a circle. We'll, we'll start with the circle because that's what we did on the whiteboard, and then we can look at how it uh, changes for an airfoil. And then last of all, there's this section right here that essentially is a little snippet of code that corrects for the orientation of the point. So it checks whether the points are in uh, clockwise or counterclockwise position. And if the points are in counterclockwise position, then we flip them so that they are in clockwise position. And I'll show what happens if we don't do this as well. So let's go through the part that actually matters, the part that was on the whiteboard. Uh, if you look back to the summary of equations, then you can see that this is everything that we were calculating. So for every single uh, panel, we're going to loop over all the panels, we're going to compute the x control point, the y control point, the dx and dy, those are the panel lengths in the x direction and the y direction, then the total panel length using the Pythagorean theorem, uh, then we're going to get the panel orientation angle, that's phi, and then if phi is less than zero, we're going to add 360 degrees, and then we'll compute uh, delta using phi plus 90, always, and then we'll compute beta using delta minus the angle of attack, and it's really just that simple. Okay, so now we can just run this code either by pressing here or by pressing F5, and you can see that it pops up with our filled black polygon, right, and we have eight panels on this, and then this is approximating this dashed circle. I'm just saying that these points are approximating the circle, and then you can see the outward normal vectors here. We have the first panel blue, second panel green, and that shows us that we're moving around clockwise like this. You can also note that each of these lines is the same length because all of these panels are the same length. So what happens now if we don't flip the points? We know that we flip them because if I look back here, the points are counterclockwise, so it's flipping. So if I comment this section out of the code and then run it again, now we can see the same shape, except now the first panel's here and the second panel's here, which means that we're going around uh, counterclockwise, and the outward normals are no longer outward pointing, they're actually pointing inward, so this is not good for the rest of our code. So I'm going to switch over from circle to airfoil, and now if I run this, you can see I'm just loading in a GOE623 airfoil, and you can see the airfoil in the black filled polygon, and we can see the first panel in blue, the second panel in green, and so you can see that we are moving around in the clockwise direction, which is all well and good, and these normal vectors should be pointing normal to the panels, which you can see that they are. Now let's check what happens when we switch to counterclockwise. So we'll still use the airfoil, but again we're going to comment this out so it doesn't flip them, and then we're going to run it again. And now you can see that uh, if you zoom in here actually, the first panel here, second panel here, so we're actually going around counterclockwise, and now these are normal, but they're pointing into the polygon. So here I'm actually skipping ahead to my source panel code uh, results for this particular circle that we've approximated as this octagon. And the reason I'm doing this is to show you uh, how reversing 
the direction of the points uh, makes a difference. So you can see this is correct, right? We're going around clockwise, and you can see these are these red lines are streamlines coming in from the left and going around this circle and then out to the right. And so let's see what happens when we don't flip these. So here I have not applied the flipping, and so you can see here that we're going first to second, and this is going around counterclockwise, and the streamlines come in, and they don't flow around uh, the filled polygon as you would expect. They, they sort of flow into it, which is not what we want, and so what we want to do in our code is make sure that we flip it so that we're going uh, clockwise around with our points. Now, you could define... Uh, that you want to go around counterclockwise, but you'll just have to alter the equations used to compute those angles. So for all of my codes, I'm sticking with the method that I presented in this video. So in this video, I went through the panel method geometry and how we could compute some of these geometric variables we'll need for both the source panel method and the vortex panel method. In some previous videos, I went through some elementary flows, some elementary potential flows. Um, and in the next video, I'll be going through how to create uh, more complex flows that we'll need for the source and vortex panel methods. Thanks for watching.